ready to go. Um, so I see a um, I see a quorum, and I will call the <clears throat> December tenth, twenty nineteen, governing board meeting for CP Fiber Order. Um, I did have one uh, addition to the agenda, and that was um, about the uh, name oh, yeah. registration. Unfortunately, Susan is not here yet, so I'm going to kick that towards the uh, towards the end of the agenda. Is there anything else? Um, we should be talking about. Yeah, sure. I'm going to have a new committee. Okay, let's let's put that. Uh, let's uh, we'll do that first. We'll say uh, treasure after treasurer's report. Yes, sir. Okay. Chairman. I see her. All right. So we'll do the committee proposal, and then we're we'll do the name registration. Yep. Um, mailing a, pre a real mailing address, or a postal box, or something. Okay. So let's say name, registration, and address. Okay. Administrative stuff. Yeah. Anything else that we have to add to the agenda? Okay. <clears throat> Any public comments? Anything not on the agenda that anybody would like to talk about? Okay. Hearing none. Um, Chartier's report, I guess we will press the snooze on until Nathan gets here. Uh, committee proposal, Chuck. Okay. Um, before I make a motion, uh, I just want to give a little bit of backstory on this, and, and that is, as I've come up to speed, uh, I've found it a little bit challenging to find the information that I need in order to uh, you know, effectively come up to speed. And, and I've also noticed that when I point people to the CD Fiber website as an example, there's not a lot there in terms of minutes and, and information on what CD Fiber is all about. In addition to that, as I started sending out surveys and so forth, I also noticed that the way we talk about ourselves is a little bit all over the place. There are a lot of different claims and assertions that are used out there about what CV's fiber's purpose is and, and why we're doing this. So my proposal would be to create a communications committee. The communications committee's purpose and mission would be to consolidate the official communications from and about CV fiber uh, by taking on activities included, but not limited to developing and building a library of the official claims and assertions that CV Fiber can make in a public capacity, drafting and distributing press releases, managing public communications profiles such as website and social media, and consulting with members on the board on how to best proceed in other communication activities on an as-needed basis. So uh, if a board member is presented with a particularly tricky community question that they want a little bit of guidance on, the board could, could help with that, uh, that sort of activity. Um, <clears throat> drafting survey intros is, a, is another good example of that. Uh, and so that's the thought process there, just to kind of help button that stuff up and, and make it a little more polished and consistent. Uh, as part of that, I would personally volunteer to help get the website a lot more populated with information, uh, as I have loads of experience managing websites. Um, and that's it. So my motion, unless anybody wants, well, why don't we table the, any questions for discussion? Yeah, so um, it would be nice to have the concrete, like, charter, like, list of things that the committee is um, assigned to do sure. by the governing board. Um, it would be nice to have that in, in advance, and I apologize for not res responding to your email uh, sooner about what the committees that currently are in existence. Um, that said, I'm just one voice here. I'm happy to hear if anybody else thinks as well. Michael? Um, it dovetails into the discussion two meetings ago where the Business Development Committee was thinking of dividing into two committees or into subcommittees. Um, and I don't, I don't think you were there for that. I was not, no. So we were calling it the Outreach Committee or a subcommittee. And so I think there are certain functions in the Business Development Committee that could be offloaded into something like that, where that could be dovetailed into it. Either way, I think um, there are things like uh, approaching people for grant contributions, that kind of thing. It's, it's a form of communications, but it's also more than communications. It's fundraising. Sure. And that came out of business development, but we kind of thought that was kind of different from RFPs for construction or business plans. So we we're trying to think of how we could divide some of our duties into two committees or subcommittees. So that fits. I, I don't know which way the board would like to go, whether they want to take some more things off of business development and put it into this new outreach or communications committee, or whether you want to <coughs> join our committee and be part of that subcommittee. Either way. Yeah, what do you think? 
I think it's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> it is, you hit the nail on the head on every little piece of that in terms of having a consistent message, visibility, and um, a regular place to put stuff, right? That's we haven't it. had minutes for months, so you're not too far away on that one. Um, where would donor tracking stuff go in relation to that? Would that stay in business development, part <coughs> communication? I think um, in my experience, many nonprofits lump communications and fundraising into one department or committee in this case. Uh, and in other uh, instances, they are separate distinct entities. To my mind, it makes sense to have them work together as closely as possible. Oftentimes, communications will uh, develop and curate the grants language bank so that we don't have to keep reinventing the wheel when we submit applications. We can just pull from an encyclopedia of descriptions or narratives that summarize what we're doing and how we're doing it. Um, and then, you know, but so I, I think it's something to discuss whether or not communications is wholly distinct from fundraising or not. Um, but they definitely will need to work very closely together. Jerry? I would say at the present moment while we're uh while we're, we're still still kind of organizing the fundraising aspect that it stay where it, where it is and, and get, get it get grounded a little bit more, I think. Um, Siobhan has started up something relatively new, but along with that, I think the idea of somebody managing the content on the website is brilliant. I, I think that would be that would be because we really haven't delegated that to any it's 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 a little been a little bit you know haphazard in in what gets up there to have a committee that's dedicated to that I think that would be great. Yeah, we just <clears throat> shot stuff to Jared and it goes up. Right. Yeah, right. 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 Mm -hmm. You know, I think actually this is a great discussion because it says that we're growing and we know what we have to be doing better than we did two years ago when we first came up with the different committees that we were going to mm -hmm. establish. So it might be time to have a sort of a general review of how the committees are structured. I, I hate to suggest such an organizational kind of thing to spend time on, but it, it's the, the organization is growing, and I, I think keeping a focus of what we're doing and how we get the work done is a great idea. And maybe what Jerry just said could be a good patch to getting the website up and running a little bit better, and that would be to get Chuck to he's willing to do it, to just take over and see what he can do with that one specific thing. I mean, you certainly identify a great need that I think we've known has been there for a while, but it's becoming more, more important to address it. Yeah, I, the need is expressed as awesome. Um, I, my, and you just kind of hit on the back side of it, though, which is, you know, what are we doing really? And my, the overriding concern we've had for a while is that we're elected members, we're only here for a year, it's a little hard to be operational as a group as we are. It doesn't mean that you don't identify the need and figure out a way to do it. But I'd almost be more comfortable, kind of like what we do with Jared, like saying, you're the web guy <laughs> for now until we figure it out more or something like that. But I don't, I don't know. It's just something to think about. Because rather than we could end up with committee upon committee and a little bit of confusion, and then as things change, it gets a little hard to be operational. I'd say there's some value though to having a system in place so that one person steps down, next person steps up, you don't end up with the chaos of somebody's got one system and they switch to a completely different system. And I, I think it's two different roles to kind of one, there's one role to manage the website, there's another role to manage the content. Mm -hmm. I think those are two, two, two separate things. So, and, and I, I think, you know, we've gotten to the point where we have enough content and certainly we're getting more and more all the time that managing the content is a real need and not for an individual but you know hopefully uh, you'll, you'll, you know, you'll have <coughs> compatriots <laughs> so I wonder if in the short term it might it might be a good idea to essentially hand Chuck the reins and just empower him to go and do whatever you're willing to do um, with Jared's help um, because you have all of like the domain registration, you've got all the logins and everything for uh, for that. Um, but yeah, if, <clears throat> I think we could hand that off to you, and then maybe if we had a, a concrete list, um, maybe worked on in conjunction between you, excuse me, and the business development committee, 
about what is the charge of that new committee. Then maybe there'll be some people peeling off of business development who want to go and do that then, or other people who maybe feel that that's a better, a better option for them as well. Um, and then we can you know, approve that at the January meeting, whatever that would, whatever that would be. For the approval for the January meeting, there would there would be something written to approve, right? There would be a charter, a charter. as you said. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so that I mean, I think there's a lot of good ideas about what this um, to be created committee might do, uh, but I think having a concrete bullet like here's the thing that the governing board is actually going to um, delegate that responsibility to you um, in a rather legal sense. Yeah. Just one other comment in. <clears throat> that is on the fundraising topic. I was definitely envisioning that that would stay in the hands of the Business Development Committee, <laughs> but that the two committees would be working hand in hand to mm -hmm. craft the messaging around the fundraising activities. Uh, yeah. Good. yeah. No, I just wanted to state that you know, as as we as we are growing as as an organization, um, and and as, as we're getting these these grants and as we can you know, continue to progress, um, we are becoming uh, more. Evident in the public's eyes, so PR is going to become really important, really quick, um, and the messaging that we're going to have to construct uh, to make sure that the public understands who we are, what we do, and why we're doing it needs to be constructed in a way that is understandable. And I remember you had brought this up before on some uh, documentation that that we had that you wanted to go back in and, and make it a little more lame and or whatever, um, so, so that that language was more understandable <coughs> to broad majority of uh, people. So I think maybe, I don't know if it's a conjunction that, or, or, or how that would work, but I, I, could, I think that's a really important piece that we can't forget. David, did you have something? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody else have any thoughts on this? So what would you like to tackle first? Uh, well, it sounds like I have a pretty clear charge here, which is to come back with the January meeting with a concrete in writing proposal, we add it to the agenda now for for discussion, and and I'll join the business development committee in one of their upcoming meetings to, to work with them on, on formulating a plan on, on roles and responsibilities. Does that sound right to you? Sure. And if if there's anything else that you think needs to be on the website, I think we can probably even without a motion just say if there's something that you think belongs on there, something needs to be changed or added or whatever. Sure. Just how do you guys just work work together and do what you feel is best. I mean, I think it, it, it yeah. With the caveat that um, it's within our policy of what is public and what is private, we may want to check with some people about that. Of course. Yeah. I would just add one final element to your already onerous charge, <laughs> which is <laughs> that in terms of last, at the last meeting, I'm just looking at the minutes now, we discussed collecting stories from community members who would like to share stories about their internet service and CV fiber. If we do have a person or a committee or whatever who's in charge of communications, it would fall to them, I think, to manage and, and, and catalog those stories in a responsible <coughs> way in coordination with fundraising again. So and we don't use the same persons. If we do choose to go with the fundraising you know, appeal letter process, we, we don't use the same story every six months or whatever. Um, it would be up to communications to shepherd that. That makes sense. Okay. So, feel, feel okay then? I do. Forward? Yep. Excellent. Anybody else on this? Okay. So, Jared, do you feel okay with it? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Wonderful. Um, so, um, Susan asked if we could talk about the name registration, and there was another um, another point brought up that we should also talk about having an address. So yeah. we've been talking about getting a PO box for some time. We have funding for that. Um, we could pull the trigger on that at any point that somebody is willing to go and do that paperwork. So <clears throat> I'm happy to uh, hand things over to you at this point. Okay. Does the town does the does it matter where the town the PO box is in? No consideration. I don't think so. It would be tough to have one in Berlin. Wow. I have a long story to tell you about that. Okay. Um, well, certainly the it varies. The rates would vary with boxes depending on the post office. 
I suppose Mont Montpelier would be the most expensive then. Is oh, that yeah. right? Oh, definitely. Yes. Yeah. If they even have any boxes available. So that would be part of the part of the research. I mean, I don't know that we necessarily you know need to nickel and dime too much, but if you know if it is, you know, let's say the Elmore Post Office <laughs> uh, turns out to be the cheapest. I'm going to go on a limb and say that maybe we don't want to choose that one, because otherwise Alan is going to be you every time. Hey, you know? I'm like 15 miles away. Yeah. <laughs> well, and from me, it's another 15 miles, so we can. Uh, so I one thing about Worcester is yeah, you pay right there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That, that, that would not be so bad. So, so, so what are the what are the candidates? Mont Montpelier. I, I think there are actually some PO boxes that are that are available that are in Berlin that are on. Um, Crossed on Road and Route 12 by the fire, fire station. So that's Eastbury uh, Post Office would actually have some route not, and they're not that far off. And I believe their rates are pretty reasonable. And when I was on the fire department, their the cost is pretty good. Very city. Yeah. Very city, no, yeah. North, yeah. North Field. As, as your clerk, I would prefer something that I can I, I live in Woodbury, um, so East Montpelier, I think, is um, easy for me to go in and out of. Go start there? I can uh, check with the rates there, and I can also ask Montpelier. Um, so we could, I mean, we can, okay, right now, we can we can pre-approve if we want to approve up to a certain amount. Um, you know, Jeremy, there used to be another option. I'm not sure it's still true. There, there are private companies that offer the equivalent of post box services. That's what, what's in that called, Montpelier copy? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we, in fact, we, we had a former board member who I think had a Montpelier copy address. Um, <laughs> oh, really? Tell no, me. No, no, no. Maybe, maybe that one was an old um, But it, it might be. It's cheaper. And I, I don't know if you're trying to get a place in Montpelier or you're trying to avoid Montpelier. But I know the coffee shop there you near know, the Savoy, whose name escapes me at the moment, at times has, has had post on box services. I guess, I guess you can't say post office box services. Yeah. Mail services or something. As, as a former postal employee, I think that we should support our governmental service while it survives. Well, it's still there. <laughs> you know, the free trade guy. I mean, you know, no, right? no. no. Okay, okay, so uh, if it's okay with the group, uh, I'm going to look at East Palace, East Montpelier, and Montpelier, and I would, I would, I would, um, I don't have the budget in front of me. I don't know what the line item would be. Um, but I can propose, I know in Woodbury, Little Woodbury is like $65 a year. So a <clears throat> five and a half by 11 post office box in East Montpelier is 150 for a year. So we can maybe cap it. It's a smaller one. Uh, the three inch by 5.5 inch extra small is $64. Really nice to think that, right? Well, it, it, but I, I mean, it, it would be nice to be able to have to receive, you know, full-size envelope or something yeah. like that. But you just go, you just go to the counter. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be that there, frequent. So you get a small box, they just put okay. a little notice so in. You, 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 to you tell me. You're the, you're the, you're the collective wisdom, global brain. <laughs> and you can upgrade later. Yeah. yeah. Go small. Well, that's true. Okay. I think so maybe we'll start small and do a six month, look at a six month, and then renew it. I, I, I think we can. I think you can always upgrade and just pay the difference, right? Um, there knows. I, I wasn't a clerk. So Here's know. the thing. Yeah, yeah you do don't really want to change your. PO box that often, especially you're going to have some stationery you're going to be printing out, probably business cards. So the, the physical box isn't where the number is, is it? If you, <laughs> change, if you change the size box, you have to change your address. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. So why don't we just go for the 12 months then? I don't think that, you know penny pinching about this is really going to going to matter. So um, I'm going to move that we authorize Susan to. Um, get a post office box or CD fiber um, for um, no more than $75 per year. Second. Okay. Thanks, Shimon. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstaining. Okay. There you go. Okay. I'm on that. 
and if you if you paid for that yourself, we can reimburse you. Or if you want, um, if you want a check drawn from our bank account, we're worth making. Okay. Okie dokie. <coughs> um, again, so the PO box and the name registration. The name so registration. so that registration apparently CB the CB fiber name registration expired last February. Yes. You said yes. Which is and surprising. The, the nonprofit entity itself is not registered. Okay. Just, it was like a hold on a name. Yeah. And just the name was registered for another like a year, I think. Yeah, and, and, and we had to actually kind of seize that name back, go through an administrative process because somebody else registered for it. We oh. went through a annoying process. Oh, okay. And so if, so if that needs to be um, re-registered too, do you know the cost of that, like $50? Usually, yeah, for corporations. Yeah, so, it's not that much. So, but we should also register Central Vermont Internet. That was the actual trade name that we um, Did you want to do a DBA as CV Fiber or what? I mean, that's, that's how, I think that's how we're organized with um, with the IRS on the, on the EIN registration. Let me verify that. So we already have an EIN number. We do. And oh. we, we needed to do that for um, all of the grants that we've gotten. Right. So we are okay. <coughs> Central, so Central Vermont Internet doing business as CB Fiber. Yeah, okay. Central Vermont Internet is the name of the communications union district, but we have been doing business as CB Fiber. Okay, so it's CB, it's Central Vermont Internet? Correct. That's or no, nope, it's not an ink, it's not an LLC, it's a so communications union district. The question that could be that we didn't search for Central Run in that and we are. Uh, that's true, yes. Or it could be that we are up to date. We should yep. check and see. It could be. Because they do notify you just yeah. before you expire and let you know, and I would think Becca would have gotten that message. Presumably, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it got, it got it updated. Could, right. Got, so I'll, I'll look at it. I'll look into it. Let y'all know what's going on. So I'm just gonna. I'm actually just, just gonna look it up right now because if because we should author authorize you to spend the money okay. if it's if it's necessary. Okay. So let's see. <clears throat> Stand by. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Central Vermont Internet CUD, which is technically the business name, is registered by Becca. It is listed as active. Um, so that happened. The CV Fiber, that was a, I think that was registered as a, as a DBA, if I'm not mistaken. But let's, let's see this one. So it's, what'd you say, Central Vermont? Central Vermont Internet CUD. If you just search for C U D, yes, that's like we're a communications union district. Communications <laughs> union district. Yes, that's the kind of organizational structure that we are. Okay. So we're not a corporation or a, a specific kind of municipality. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, she only had a name reservation. Mm -hmm. We didn't actually pay to to register it, so it would be it would be worthwhile to to register that. And I th okay. think. I think that's $50. Yeah. Somebody knows better than I do. And a DBA is better than a trade name in this case. So. Okay. So I'm going to move <clears throat> that we authorize Susan to also spend $50 um, on setting up the CB Fiber DBA. Great. Thanks, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? <clears throat> All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Fifty more dollars for okay. you. Look at that. Yeah, I'm getting rich here. <laughs> I guess so. All right. Um, anything else on this <coughs> that you think that we need to do? Okay. Is there anybody else that? I, I would like a copy of the um, of the uh, tax. Sure. Number for the right. for my records in case I have to go out and find something and I don't want to pay tax. Of course. Don't tell the governor. Hmm. Of course. And you have it. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Um, we're still parking the uh, treasurer's report for the moment. 
Business Development Committee report back and next steps. Okay, the uh, committee met we could go Tuesday, or we could go from today back. And uh, we uh, finalized the, the ranking sheets we used to review the proposals. Um, they were sent out to everybody the next day when we, had eight, we received eight proposals. Uh, we're meeting on Thursday night to uh, compile a look at all the results and try to deal with the numerous questions we now all have with each of the proposals. <laughs> um, I don't want to forecast so we may not be able to deal with this thing next Tuesday. I mean, in terms of recommendations, because then we'll have more questions so we have answers. Um, so we'll, but I'll let everybody know after the meeting on Tuesday, Thursday night where we, where we got to. Um, a uh, pretty wide range of proposals uh, for those people who had a chance to look at them. Um, some good ones and some mediocre ones. And, and, I, and I think there's a couple in there that we can probably almost dismiss out of hand. Yeah. I think there's, there's a way to even consider those. Yeah. Do so we need, yeah, okay. So we're going to do that on Thursday night. Thursday night. Thursday night. Yeah, we have a, I mean, we're very, yeah, we'll figure out how to do that actually already. Yes? So we, we do have a ranking system that we agreed on, so, and there's only eight of them. And you got you got to read it before you can dismiss it out of hand. So it's going to get a, it's going to get a poor ranking, and it will sure. not rise to the but, top. But, but I mean, ha having read them, there are some with major gaps, major holes, major flaws, that I think we have enough good proposals that yeah. we have enough to work on without spending too much time on the patently flawed ones. We all oh yeah, well right. we're, we're trying to do this this aggregation. And selection in one meeting, so yeah, we're only going to talk. Um, I suspect there's going to be pretty much agreement on which yeah. are the top ones. I do have a question though, it wasn't clear to me. I've already sent in my rankings, but to Greg, but is it only the business development committee that's submitting rankings, or is it everyone? They want to review all eight and tomorrow, though, right? Today was the day. So, no, well, I thought it was tomorrow. 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 your email I said tomorrow. I my calendar for today, so I can force myself to do it. Yeah. It so my 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 follow up question is Great. because among the small group we we uh, we already assumed that we were going to do this. Can you? Is it is it appropriate for somebody to only send in a ranking <clears throat> on one or two of them and not all eight? You got to do all eight. You got to do all eight. Yeah. You re, you do. It's not fair. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And, and we requested yeah, I did all that eight. You all have to do all eight. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we requested that anyone who does, outside the committee, who does do rankings, please attend the meeting. Yeah, Thursday. please come. Yeah. And the meeting's at 515, right? Correct. Sorry about that. That's okay. I need, a, I need an assistant. <laughs> editor. Everybody needs an editor, right? <laughs> uh, anything else, David? And that's it on that. Okay. Any uh, questions for David while he's here? We're gonna have a good meeting on Thursday. I think that's gonna yeah, be the bulk of the, the bulk of the work for this quarter, anyways. Okay. Um, status of the survey. Okay. I I tabulated the results we have to date, and some towns are doing a lot better than they had been. Um, we're we have um, 1,014 responses, which is 4.7% of all premises in Vermont. I mean, in the district. Although it doesn't include more town. Yeah, but, um, more. We'll have more town in the next <laughs> month. Um, with Middlesex still going up. I don't know what you guys are doing over there. 171. 21% of Middlesex <coughs> households have filled in. Well, somebody's filling in more than one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I took hard copies down to the town clerk's office and said, beat up anybody who <laughs> hasn't filled this out. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and then it's, 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 <laughs> Worcester's number two, and then there's a fight between Callis and, uh, and East Montpelier now. East Montpelier has moved way up, so that's great. Um, it's a challenge. I mean, I, I took around uh, paper surveys to the three post, for those who don't know, Callis has three post offices, <laughs> two stores, and a rec center. So it was, um, and I have not seen any paper surveys come back to me. So I'm not sure that's even gonna work that well. But it's a try, I mean, at least we're trying. And we may have to go do it at a door. Um, 
But we definitely have some interesting information just from the returns so far. And, I, and in terms of if CB5 or competitively priced broadband service to your community, how likely would you be to subscribe? 49% said definitely would. Probably would is 40%. So that's 89%. Now, okay, so we get 50% maybe. <laughs> we'll be doing okay. But it was what I thought, and I didn't summarize the results, but most people who filled in the survey have internet service. So it wasn't like, you know, and there were, I mean, there's a whole bunch of questions about whether you're happy or not, what isn't, but I thought those numbers were pretty nice. The next one was, in stating that you probably definitely probably subscribe to CDV value, but what are your primary reasons? Number one was prefer higher speeds, 69% of the people who filled in that, that box. And next was um, <coughs> improved reliability, was 55%. So that's what's driving <coughs> some of the responses here. And then the last one that I've summarized, would you be willing to invest in the planning, construction, and or operation of the network in the first two years? Uh, of the people who replied to that, well, there were 772 people who answered that, 46% um, said they'd do a two-year pre-subscription. <laughs> it's pretty, wow. you know, pretty, of course, we didn't know the price. I, I said reasonably priced. Right. In looking at the prices that we put on the survey, the bulk of them are coming in right now. People are spending between 50 and $100. Yeah. Uh, Correct so, me if I'm wrong, but the survey didn't indicate a two-year subscription, did it? It just said pre-subscription. Pre okay. I don't know where I get the two years. Anyway, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the 8% um, or 63 people said they give a gift. So Siobhan has that data now. Yeah, I have the data. I haven't massaged it yet or put it <laughs> into a little green light because it turns out it's going to be a bit of work. And I don't know what other meant. <laughs> 110 <laughs> people said other. So that's... Uh, Maybe they'd be willing to go door to door for surveys. Yeah. In kind, in kind, yeah. All yeah. oh, right. Um, so that's, uh, I mean, one of the issues in the RFPs, and for those who have read the RFPs, I mean, they're counting on us having this information for them to do the study. There are a number of communities that would be really hard to say that there's enough information in the survey for them to make a judgment. Um, uh, I know what to do about those, like Elmore, Roxbury, um, and is, is Roxbury got a new delegate, uh, Jeremy? No, no. no. So, I mean, well, it's still, um, it's still John, and he's still yeah, swamped. Right. Um, and so, so I, I will offer because I'm going to have time over the next um, roughly month. <clears throat> if there are towns that don't currently have paper copies of the surveys at their town offices, schools, other public places, um, tell me now. I will print them out. And I'll either put, if you don't want your address on it or contact information, I'll put mine on there. And I will just, I will physically print it. I will physically drop it off. I have the time to do that now. How many people have done printed surveys and put them in there? And have you gotten things mailed back to you? I've gotten nothing mailed back yet. And actually, yeah. this question I have for you, has Barrytown number gone up at all? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, no, Barrytown had That's probably cool. the biggest increase, but it was so low that it, it was good. I that, too, the cabin numbers are gone up. Cabin's up. So I put 7%. the QR code, the poster up, all over National Life. And there's a whole bunch of people at National Life who live in the immediate area. So I'm oh, guessing good. that boosted some of the numbers, because I had several people who were talk catching me, are you Siobhan? Did you put the, what's going on? So I had several people okay. in the building who pigged me on that. And, and um, but I haven't, I can't get my clerk to understand what I'm asking her to do. I asked her to print out the poster and put it up and told her I would drop off survey. paper surveys, but she said I can't get the paper survey into the newsletter because that would make it 20 pages long. And I'm like, like can, you, can you clear a spot on the desk? I'm just going to yeah. place them here. Yeah. That's, that's what and I, that's I just haven't had a chance because her hours are so trimmed. I just haven't had a chance. So if you could drop some off for me, you could put my name on okay. it. Um, I actually constructed, I'm sorry. Um, those, are, those folders you get when you go to conferences and people stuff paper on both sides, I cut them in half. I put Shabbat's little thing on the, the front of it and stuff 20 surveys in it. Mm. Use push pins mm -hmm. in the places I want. <clears throat> and awesome. Perfect. So the difference between Callis and Middlesex is Callis put them in all the places. The Middlesex said to, said to the clerk, you've got to could get everybody to do this, <laughs> and that's the key. Oh. So putting them in every place isn't the key. It's no, getting it's... somebody to to manage them there. True. 
And if you don't have someone to manage them, it's, it's going to languish, probably. So that was the right that answer. Probably, yeah. That's For Berlin, could, you know, Corinne sends out what the things you need to know for oh, Berlin. That's true. Could she attach it as a uh, um, as a yeah. as a well, file? Well, she could attach it as, as a file, but she could also, I mean, if they're getting her emails, they can easily click through on the link. Right, but if you had, if she had, you know, if you had both options, sure, I will send it to her immediately. Yeah. Um, we're sitting in a school, and this is where the, our education begins. And if maybe we can ask the superintendent of the school systems if they could send home their, in their Friday um, folders uh, maybe one of our surveys. Now Washington Central is supposed to be doing that. I gave them all the information, I gave them the survey link. Will you, will you follow up with them and just get a yes, timing? Make sure. <laughs> Who was that? Washington Central supervised me. Whatever it is. Whatever, whatever now call. Do you remember who the contact was? Yeah, it was the, uh, su the uh, superintendent. School. Oh, okay. Right on. Is that John Pandolfo? No. 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 It's a woman. A woman. Yeah. Yeah. She's standing right. there. And the, I, I presented to that district that their meeting was held in Middlesex about three weeks ago, and the IT guy from the district was there, and we got a lot. I mean, he's pretty much behind us a lot. So mm -hmm. there's, four, there's five schools there. What is the, so data collected from surveys is often used to represent a snapshot in time. So I'm just wondering when, not to, not to be the, the trumpet player, but when, what, is the, what is the end point of this data collection? And in, you know, I'm, I'm thinking long term, how would we use this data for fundraising purposes, for grant applications, that sort of thing? Um, I just wonder if we stretch this out over six months, one could argue that that data is not representative of, of the current mood of the population since it's been going on for so long. Um, just throwing that out there, I think just my own limited understanding is that the response rate that we've received, if those numbers are unduplicated results, it's already statistically valid. I, I, we could run that by like UVM or somebody, but. I, I think, you know, and they're very encouraging yeah. figures, to be sure. So I'm just wondering when, if ever, <clears throat> should we call it? All right. So I'm not, so first of all, I don't think we can call it statistically significant ever because it's a self-selected survey. Sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> second, it's, uh, there's a percentage that we stated in the RFP that the consultant is expecting to work with. 20%. And, 20%. and that's the, that's where the buck stops. Are we going to hit 20%? I'm going to go with probably not but we will get as close to that as we can so that we have something useful to hand over to the consultant who will hopefully then be able to do something useful with that. But that's the point. <coughs> we need a time, and yep. the time is going to probably be related to when the consultant needs like to write January. the feasibility study. Just so. Gotcha. And then Which we'll is use, the first we'll two months. data for other purposes. Later. It's the beginning of the right. year. The first two or three months of the year, that, that data has to be in hand and used. Deborah Taylor, by the way, is the superintendent. Yeah, Deborah Taylor, thank you. Um, I would ask that we at least leave them open a little longer. We've had more towns out there for four whole days. We've got 52 <laughs> responses. Smart, so we've, you did great. We've, we've got a few more months. All right. And you're, saying, you're, you're already had a bunch of time. <laughs> I would also argue that busy. this probably the stale date on this is probably pretty far out given how static the internet landscape is in our area. <laughs> so I don't think that that's going to change anytime soon. So I think we could make the argument that, yeah, this was last November, but nobody's moved into the area since then. Sure. I, I was envisioning maybe using this data at some point when, given how encouraging it is, a sort of press release to generate you buzz or mm -hmm. a grant application or when we submit, submit an appeals letter or something like that. when really time it right so that we can really benefit from sure. the good press. So. Absolutely. Cool. Anything else I did on? use it in our grant application. Good. <laughs> Anything else on the survey? Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, David. Uh, status of grants. I can start us off. The <coughs> Think Vermont grant uh, that's been, was waiting for insurance, then was waiting for me. I have all the paperwork in, waiting to hear. Um, 
I've not heard back from DPS about the the final paperwork to be able to pull the trigger on the um, broadband innovation grant. Uh, that should be soonish. We'll see. Um, and then USDA is just kind of ongoing reporting. I submitted the first uh, required quarterly report for the USDA grant actually before our, our last meeting. And there'll be another one due uh, like mid-January, mid I think, for the fourth quarter. So the quarter ending in on December 31st. So um, not much to report there. <clears throat> I have to get with Nathan to make sure that any expenditures that we have made, that those just come out and get um, tracked appropriately. Um, I don't think we've asked, um, done anything, any reimbursement from the Cabot grant. That would probably be the place where we should go first. That would be my, my instinct. Um, anything else? Anybody has any? Well, I was just curious. Uh, uh, never mind. It's not, it's not related to the grant. Okay. okay. Um, Can you let me know something about the Cabot grant? Mm -hmm. what, what is that? It's uh, $500. It just needs to be an invoiceable item. Um, or, you know, something that's whatever, and it's just for general expenses or support. So, and it's through uh, the Community Foundation of Canada. Oh, that's nice. Okay. So, like the P.O. Box, for example, the P.O. Box, the, the registration. The software that provides them. <coughs> those yeah. would be great items. Yeah, and that's, and I imagine that turnaround is going to be rather quicker than yeah. USDA. We just give it to the top. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, status of uh, fundraising and software, Shalom, that's you. So, we, I have three days left on the free trial that I had for a little green light. I like it, I'm gonna be able to work with it. Um, and so I need to pay for it. Uh, I have payment options. If we pay for a year, we get a 10% discount. It's $39 a month. Um, if we pay for a half a year, it's a 5% discount. I can pay for it with a credit card, an ACH payment, or an invoice. I can request an invoice. And I didn't know how we wanted to proceed with that, but it sounds like the Cabot grant could be used. Yeah, to I would say, why don't we can try this? Yeah. Pay, pay, you pay credit card, give me the invoice, and I'll work with you in the town of Cabot and get you, and you'll just submit it. I'm going to have to talk to my budget manager about that. Or I, I'll do it if you want. Yeah, or I'm, I, I'm, I'm happy to do it. I, I, I can do it too. So, yeah. so maybe could you work together at the end of the meeting? Yep. Yeah. Go and do that, yeah. and then yeah, you'll get emailed. Get emailed email the receipt. <laughs> please, please make sure that Nate, both Nathan yeah. and I get a copy of that, because um, <clears throat> we'll need to document that as well. I've added both you and Nathan mm -hmm. as people. I think I sent you an email. Yep, and I actually like I, I actually clicked the the thing once I set it up to actually get the little training okay. videos and stuff. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, and I was going to say, oh, I've added myself as a constituent and I put in my five hours of survey taking at eighteen dollars an hour because that's what survey companies are paying their survey takers who go out and around now um, so if people are doing in kind stuff let me know what your hours are I'll find out find out what the accept general rate is for whatever that is mm -hmm. and I will add it as an in-kind donation awesome. to our database okay. How, how much is one year for that? I mean, if well, you guys are going to pull the trigger, let's all Thirty-nine dollars mm -hmm. times twelve, 12 minus ten percent. Four sixty-five. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're the professor. You figure it. I just thought you were at year. <laughs> no, I don't have it. Okay. No, I just it says thirty-nine for per month, and then yearly is a ten percent discount. I hadn't tapped on it yet. Okay, four twenty-one twenty. Okay. For ten percent off the thirty-nine. Cool. I, I included that. Four twenty one twenty. So, um, just in the event that they charge you extra for the uh, credit card fee or something like uh -huh. that, um, I'd like to authorize uh, Siobhan to spend four hundred and fifty dollars on the fundraising software. Second. Okay. We'll do a second. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions, motion passes. Siobhan, the, the, the national the independent sector does a volunteer rate every year, and a lot of nonprofits oh, cool, use thanks. that hourly rate. It's 25 43 an hour. Yeah. 
Sweet. Yeah, you, you got a raise. That person more. might get paid eighteen dollars off. I can tell you, the firm is charging thirty-eight right. or fifty bucks. Yeah, I didn't know if it was local rate or if I could use a national rate, so I just called a guy. And I said, yeah. How much do you pay? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would go because that was enough to four fifty. Yeah. Just a quick comment on the table of the discussion, but um, hearing about logins and passwords for the website, logins and passwords mm -hmm. for that stuff, we may want to start thinking about password management. Yep. Should somebody get an accident, we still have access to yep. part of the system. Key pass database might, might be nice. Okay. That's something that somebody can just go and set up? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a free download, and they can actually even um, export a, a, a database that we could house somewhere else, so in case the, you know, with a uh, master key. Mm -hmm. So we could access Yeah, I, I, I used password safe. I, I just didn't know if there was like an enterprise sort of thing where we could essentially yeah. assign. Yes, one, pa one password, which is the other one. Yeah, that's what you can ask. And they have more enterprise like features, you're just going to pay for it. Okay. Yeah. So is, I think as long as we have more than one admin on each piece of software, I don't think this should be too much of a problem that we need to go too crazy about it. Is, is there another person who has admin rights is, to, to your machines? I mean, I'm, I'd be happy to uh, <laughs> say up uh, <laughs> One password teams is four dollars per person per month. Which one is that's one one password teams? Not sure that we're at that point yet. Yeah. Yeah. There's last pass and key pass. Key pass. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, I use last pass. Okay. Any other thoughts of fundraising and software? Anything other software that we should be looking at? Oh yeah, I hope of putting out the annuals to all our members. Oh, okay. That's right. Status of fundraising. So, this this is the our treasurer's not here. So, in, in in his place, I will do the obligatory board member shakedown. You know, folks, with your help, we can build better broadband in Central Vermont. We can only do that with help from your wallets. So, I would encourage you all, if you have the opportunity, write a check. It's tax Who Cook on the website. Yeah, you can do it right through the website. You can do it by handing me a check. So, and being Bitcoin. able to say that uh, fundraising effort has 100% board participation is very important. It's pretty important. nice. And it's often required for, for major funding. Yeah, well. that's just 25 bucks. Guy. Or even it's $5. Yeah, five bucks. yeah and that's, that's something that Norwich, anyways, really um, really holds out. It's like the staff, faculty, yeah. just the people who even you know, throw in $5, $10. So. Notwithstanding all of the wonderful in-kind work that we do at, you know, a living wage. Not that you actually get paid it, but you, you, you get to live. It's a living wage. Um, so, yes, if you're if you're willing, we would certainly accept your your contribution. Tax deductible amendment. Okay. Anything else on fundraising and software? Extra reminder. To do. Okay. Um, approval of meeting minutes. Thank you, Susan, for sending us thank you, thank you. meeting minutes. Um, Nathan and I are still um, hounding Becca. Just saying. So, Becca, if you happen to be watching this, which you're not, <laughs> it's minutes. And let me go. Um, pull up those minutes. Has anyone had, had a chance to review them and see if there's anything that needs to be modified, changed, etc.? to accept. Seconded. Okay. We've been seconded. Um, one bit of feedback that I would <clears throat> that I would have is that in the list of people present, uh, my name is spelled correctly there. In the actual body, um, my name is not. So Hansen is the Swedish spelling. E-N, H-A-N-S-O-N is the Swedish spelling. I'm Danish. Hansen, H-A-N-S-E-N. Just saying. <laughs> Swedish would be the O-N. There you go. All right. Any, any other comments on this? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. okay. And two abstentions. Okay. Every meeting was like this, right? Okay. Um, I did see an email from 
Nathan, so I'm going to, hold on, I'm just going to see if there's something to report back and I'll do the treasurer's report in this. Oh, not sure, so he was wondering, there's a calendar of events, as he maybe not, maybe didn't know that we had a meeting tonight. He was on the, on the list though, I thought. Anyways, um, okay, so we'll follow up with him next time, so we're not going to have a tre treasurer's report next time around. Okay, uh, round table, Phil. Um, <clears throat> I'm just kind of um, excited uh, in, in terms of waiting to really see what the business uh, development community does as far as prioritizing proposals. I took a quick look at them and um, thought maybe there'd be a little bit more information coming up tonight before I went back for a second look. But um, anyway, that's you know, looking forward to next week to see what we do. And at the end of the meeting, if you want to just <coughs> thumb through them, I have them here. Um, the, I just have one thing to add, and, and I, I've just looked at a couple of the proposals so far, um, but I was just looking at some of the proposals in the insurance that they plan to carry under our name for the work that, that they do, um, and I'm thinking back to the um, waiver that we got for liability insurance, and they want us to be covered at $1 million, and a lot of those weren't even close to that. So I don't know if that's something that we need to think about as we're looking for these proposals. <coughs> That, that they cover us for general liability at one million, not three hundred thousand or whatever they're, that they're proposing. So there was, yeah. So there are different thresholds for yes. different grants, right? So I, I, and I, I just wanted, I'm mm -hmm. not saying that that's the right way and the only way to do. It. I'm just saying that that, that was for that one grant. That's, they want that's that, a good, that's a good as point. we go forward as, as, as an organization, we may be covered at a higher level. So I'm not really sure. Well, three hundred was a number we we used because that, that went back to the grant requirements that we're looking for. So that wasn't even our number, right? The, right. the three mil, the 300,000 was a state of Vermont number. The, but the, the thing Vermont grant had a different number. Yes, yes. <clears throat> Which is, they're both state of Vermont grants technically, so. Right. <laughs> So we may have to we may have to go back and look through that. And, 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 and like I said, I'm not sure which number is the right number that we should be thinking about using. I just I just wanted to put that out and, there. Well, yeah, well, we use that number because that was the number needed for the grant that we're going to chase to pay for that. Right. So, or that we have to pay for. It, so. Gotcha. But and it, 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 it might be worthwhile if we find ourselves still scratching our heads about this, going back and talking to ACCD and saying. This is the RFP that we have. Is this okay? Given that we're going by DPS requirements, and for some reason ACCD's language was different. I don't know right. if you have any explanation. I don't know the answer, but I can certainly ask the question. Yeah, if you if you find out any sort of sure. secret message that we're not getting or <laughs> misunderstanding things, I appreciate it. Yeah, Javon. I'm good. Alan. I'm good. Thanks. All set. I should have added to the agenda. Um, a report from the uh, Marshall Electric Liaison Committee. I forgot to say that. So Greg Kelly and I met with, um, <coughs> early in the month we met with Barry Bernstein and Steve Knowlton from the board, and then subsequently we met with Dan Weston and Bill Powell, staff members at WEC. Um, and I think we so the more important meeting was the second one, I think. And um, topics that came up were uh, WEC participation with our surveys. Um, we got further encouragement that we could use um, inserts in the currents or inserts in bills. Um, we made it clear to them that the surveys, they, they do, a, every five or six years, they have to do a uh, member survey. And they wanted to include some uh, some CV fiber questions in that survey. And we made it clear that it really wasn't going to be useful to us. First of all, it's too far out by time. And second of all, um, they only send it out to 600 members of the 41 That's counties. A sample. So it's a tiny, tiny sample. Um, but, the, but they would be willing to do a full 
CD fiber survey as an insert and different things. And then one idea came up, um, which has to be explored. They have an answering service for um, outages and such. That answering service has access to all the member files and member contact information. And that WEC would entertain the notion of CD fiber <coughs> paying to have them do a telephone poll for us. Um, reaching members saying, would you be interested, blah, blah, blah. So we could create a short poll of WEC members who, who are in the 18 towns. They could call them, and we could figure out a statistically valid method to do that. And that might be very useful yep. for the feasibility study statistical stuff. So that was that. Um, we talked about um, placing fiber in the electric space versus the communication space and the different um, changing tariff rules at the state right now. The PUC is a, has already submitted a, a final proposed new rule to, uh, I forget the name, acronym of the organization that's going to make a decision, um, which includes, do you, want, do you want me to go into the details of that or leave that part out? Um, the 10,000 foot view. Okay. Uh, one touch, which means uh, the ability of uh, an installer to do the make ready for all the communications cables rather than wait for the utilities to do it. And also um, a provision to um, have approved contractors do it rather than wait for the utilities if they haven't, if the utility pole owners have not met certain timeline thresholds. And a shortened make ready allowance period and a different spacing on the pole and a different rate. So there's a lot of changes coming. Um, some of these are really good. Um, probably the cost will go up, though. Um, so that's going to change the budget per mile uh, for make ready. Cost goes up, but the time, the, time rea the reaction time goes down. Way better. Yeah. Way better. Um, but. But so a 30,000 a mile estimate could go up to 32,000 a mile. I'm just throwing out a number. I don't know what it is, but it's going to go up. Um, however, if we're in the electric space, um, we still think we can get away with no make ready um, and no pole attachment fees if we're working with the pole owner who would perhaps own the fiber. Lots of possibilities. Um, there's a lot of rules that WEC has to stick with and may not be able to do that for us. So it's all, and, and we're still going to have to go on Green Mountain Power Poles as well. So it gets complicated. So we discussed that a lot. Uh, we're we're going to get a list of their entire 10-year um, plan to improve poles in the WEC territory. That's really valuable because if we know they're going to replace poles in an area that we've strung fiber, it's going to cost us twice because we'll have to move cables. So it's always good to follow their improvements. Plus, the more improvements they make, the less make ready may be necessary. Mm -hmm. So if we can coordinate with them, that's going to save money too. Um, Belco. Belco. That's what we started with. So. They have concluded an agreement, of what they're calling a pilot agreement with Velcro, to um, run 72 count fiber to two uh, substations, of which 12 fibers will be dropped into uh, the WEC office building and one other substation, and the other 60 strands or to be discussed. Um, it's a pilot because Belco hasn't figured out how they want to monetize it or they haven't been um, ready to tell WEC how much they want. And so they've said, we're going to let you have these for free. We're going to work this out. And then we're going to do the rest of your substations based on what we work out. So how many miles is the two substations? One of them is like half a mile or a mile, and the other one is like six miles, I think. Jeremy, I, I hate to be this person, but as a, as a student of uh, uh, the open meeting hall, we didn't warn this discussion. Okay. And I would suggest 
Couldn't, on it, the, on couldn't it be just new business that we asked as, as per agenda and we, when we asked for agenda? I can stop. I, 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 I just think that we it, should be careful. Yeah, yeah. So it, it would be if you're delivering your, your roundtable here and yeah. we don't get into too much discussion, I, I think we're probably. Yeah, we're, we're, okay. but if there's okay. back and forth, I would okay. caution okay. against that. Okay, thanks. So, um, so, I, so I think I what think we I can... covered it all anyhow, so um, I've been chastised at the right time. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is, 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 there a, is there a value in putting this on the agenda in January? Um, I mean, are, are we going to know? The same report? Or but we'll, we'll, be, be, we're going to continue to have meetings, and I'll but, report the next one. Yeah, in January is when the RFP that WEC will respond to goes out. Um, I don't know if it goes out or if that's when their responses are due. So to get a better sense of where WEC is thinking they're going with regards to getting their grant money to study stuff, I think would be useful. Okay. So, so that, that, that's a yes for the January agenda. Okay. They're also very interested in hearing who we select because it might influence who they select. Sure. Yep. Sorry. January agenda, or January. isn't there a seven, 17th meeting? The 17th meeting, as I understood it, was for us to discuss our. Uh, so we could add another item to that. I was. I thought we were going to keep it focused on. Um, okay. Focused on just the selection of the the proposal. Of yeah. The consultants. Yeah. Okay. Okay. January. So unless we, we we could put in a special meeting, we could hold a, a different meeting, but uh, that was sort of where my brain went. Jerry. You have no, nothing for me. Okay. I, I was surprised to learn, maybe I shouldn't be surprised, that, but um, Mansfield Fiber got the first Vita loan. Oh, they got a loan? What? what? Already? Wow. Uh, approved uh, November. How much? Proposed 300000 400000 So not, not as big of a chunk as we are not looking at. Right. So, right, but it, uh, wow. I don't, so I don't know what, what's available in terms of learning about what their proposal looks like. We should find but out. Did they? So they must have already done a feasibility study of some sort. I mean, I mean, I, I, I know they're a for-profit. Right. You know, they know they know their business. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anyway, I was. So who's the right person to follow up with them and see if they're willing to be kind neighbors? I mean, not that they're exactly neighbors, but. Not me. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> Does anybody know anybody over there willing to talk to them? I could go inquire about the feasibility of applying now innocently and see what they have to say. <coughs> uh, Vita, you mean? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I meant Mansfield. I just didn't know. Oh, Mansfield? I didn't know if they would be willing to talk to us. I mean, we're not, we're never going to compete with them. What time no. is that? It? What is it? Maybe? Jericho. Jericho. Underhill. Underhill. I know some, I have a really good friend in Underhill Jericho. I could have him. Uh, tree. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I, I'm just. I'm interested. The, in the principles of Mansfield Fiber are on the EC Fiber board, so perhaps someone from EC Fiber could okay. look into it for us. Okay. okay, that's a good. Uh, that's a good tip. So that's not public information. There, there. I don't know. I mean, I know a lot. The business, no. business information. Well, yeah. The the fact that there is a loan to them and the dollar value of the loan is public information. But but the but contents of the their contents proposal. proposal. I don't know what's public and what's not. To be perfectly honest, yeah. probably not, a lot of it's not because it's a business. Hmm. Interesting. Wow. So the state would give money to a business without having the without having that information be public. I find that interesting. Well, Vita. Well, Vita gives loans all so the time. Yeah. 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 Vita is an arguably private-ish. Right. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. So Quasi oh, I didn't realize that. Quasi-public. So <clears throat> we could be in one of those situations where they are subject to the public records law, and nobody's just pushed that button yet. They're just like VTA. If they're just like VTA, then, then they're subject to the public records law. But, but, I mean, but VTA had executive decision um, <clears throat> session stuff that never had to be disclosed. Sure, as long as they went through the process of going into executive session. I'm sure, even knows how to do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, so I will reach out to EC Fiber and see if they have any sort of insight into their process and what they're what they're imagining. Because I would say even for three towns, three hundred thousand does not seem like much. Anything else? Okay. Nope. 
So thanks, David. And, uh, the communication rounds now are great. I uh, appreciate that. Just wanted to express that. And the one, given what Phil said earlier, I plan to be there Thursday, but it might be helpful for other people because it's a little bit of an insomnia cure to read all these. <laughs> um, that you do communicate out of Thursday as quick as you can. So oh, yeah. everybody who comes for the next week at least pair Some down their reading. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah, if we've narrowed it down to three or four, yeah. everybody should know that yeah. so that they can look at those. Yeah. And uh, sounds like a plan. Cool. And again, an important outcome from reviewing these are the questions you think the applicant should be supplying us answers with. There's a lot. Yeah, a lot That's a lot to do this. Uh, so, as of last week, Moortown Select Board officially sanctioned. We, we had sort of gotten the tentative vote, but uh, they wanted to reserve the right to talk to Waitsfield Telecom and allow them to have an opportunity to provide some pushback. Um, they actually, surprisingly, were very cool with the idea. And, and uh, interestingly, so that, that uh, allowed us to start putting out the surveys. The surveys have been out for four days, and we've gotten a fair amount of data already. The data mimics exactly what uh, David expressed uh, on the broader data. Um, some tidbits there, 34% uh, of admittedly self-selected respondents are on consolidated communications okay. with terrible speeds. So not, wait, not Waitsville. Yeah, the Waitsville really only serves the southern portion of our town. Um, but. I, I suspect self-selection bias uh, sure. weighs mm -hmm. heavily into that one uh, because they've already run fiber to their covered right. portions of town. Um, and 84% uh, said probably would or definitely would, um, and speed and reliability were the, the top reasons. Um, so interested to see how that data progresses and interest, you know, happy to report that uh, we are now 100% all in and, and I'll be here. And yes, and you have an alternate. I have an alternate, yes. And uh, would you have either select somebody from the select board, or is it Sherilyn, or that your? Well, so it was approved the same night I was. Um, Karen was. She was. She was. Yeah. I thought that I don't remember. Don't remember they made a motion to also make her that alternate. I can double check the records on that. Okay. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll double check the records on that. Okay. Um, and if that motion hasn't been made, I'll just bring it to them as. Uh, little bit of business that has to be great yeah because I because I, I included her in, in the uh, <coughs> the meeting agendas and whatnot because we had talked separately um, I didn't realize she was actually the ultimate otherwise she would be on the list also yeah, yeah. But, yeah. all right um, Susan I'm all set thank you all set too I'm moving to the